Greetings everybody, I am the Starving Martian and this is Thought Bubbles, where I share my thoughts on some random comics pulled from my collection and you don't get much more random than The Incredible Crash Dummies, a three-part series published by Harvey Comics back in 1993. Um, so yes, if you're unfamiliar with The Incredible Crash Dummies, um, they started life as a public service announcement. Uh, there was two characters uh, by the names of, um, uh, what were they, Vince and Larry, were the two original Crash Test Dummies. And here they are on this uh, VHS. Um, <laughs> and uh, they did these public service announcements uh, telling people why you should always buckle your safety belts. And uh, they'd get into horrible accidents and their arms would be torn off and there'd be stuff coming out of their heads. And some of it got pretty graphic. But um, the idea was to show uh, kids and uh, parents alike the value of uh, safety belts. And for whatever reason, they became hugely popular. Um, to the point where, well, as you see, there's a video cassette of one of their... Um, uh, public service announcements. It's called Ask Any Dummy Seatbelts Make Sense. Now, would you ever voluntarily watch this if it didn't have the crash dummies in it? Uh, probably not. So, they became hugely popular to the point where they got their own action figure line. Now, initially, um, Vince and Larry themselves were some of the action figures, but they got pulled pretty quickly for uh, copyright reasons. And replaced with characters named Slick and Spin. And the original toys are pretty cool. They had uh, pretty basic uh, Crash Dummy costumes. Uh, which are just um, usually one color. With um, this uh, caution tape going around it. And they'd have different features. Usually um, limbs that popped off. Or uh, in the uh, case of Pit Stop here. And a related character named Daryl. Uh, heads that pop up when you push their buttons. And they'd come with uh, vehicles you could smash and bash, and it was all great fun. The problem uh, was, though, um, at least as far as the toy companies were concerned, that there was no bad guy, there was no villain, there was nobody for them to contend with. And so eventually they ditched their um, uh, uniforms for uh, Pro-Tech armor, which was uh, bright and shiny and neon, and uh, sometimes hurt the eyes. And uh, they got some enemies in the shape of uh, Junk Man and his Junk Bots. Okay, and this was all in the action figure line. This um, was a special exclusive Junk Man that came with a video cassette of a um, 3D animation. That's um, not terribly well done 3D animation, but for the mid 90s, I'm sure it was fine. Um, and that shows the birth of Junk Man and how he creates the Junk Bots and why he's mad at the Crash Dummies, yada yada. And um, the Incredible Crash Dummies comic book follows up after that uh, origin story, after that video. And it makes some references to that. It gives the history of Junk Man, so if you missed the video, you can still figure out who all the major players are. But um, apparently Harvey Comics, who is... Known for publishing things at the time like Casper, Richie Rich. Um, they, they were publishing uh, Woody Woodpecker. Um, characters of that nature. Hot stuff. Little uh, devil character. Little friendly devil. And um, so they got the rights to publish The Incredible Crash Dummies. And this was supposed to be an ongoing series. It was not a three-part limited series. Uh, but it obviously didn't sell because they only published three issues. All right, now we're not going to go through this panel by panel, page by page. This is not like when I do Mars Attacks comics reviews. Uh, for the most part, on these thought bubbles, I'm just going to give you a basic overview of the comic so you can judge for yourself if it's worth looking into. Right now, I'm going to say right off the bat, unless you are a huge, incredible Crash Dummy collector, you can easily pass on these three issues. They are not terribly good. Basically... Um, they're a whole string of crash puns, one after another. And I love puns. They're one of my favorite types of humor. My wife can attest to that. She likes them perhaps less than I do. <laughs> but, um, but you know what? There's only so many ways you can make a crash pun. And they make every single crash pun possible by the end of issue number one. 
and then repeat them with variation in issues two and three. Out of the three issues, if you're going to pick one up, grab issue one just because it is issue one and it has the best cover of uh, Slick and Spin here bursting through the seal of the uh, President of the United States. Um, as you can see in this little blurb here, the President has gone missing, which is amazing because um, uh, there's just a book published like, with that title and with uh, Bill Clinton as a co-writer. Uh, and, um, and, and yeah, the... Crash Dummies beat you to it, Bill. You know what? I can't expect a lot of creativity from Mr. Clinton. He names his autobiography My Life. How dull is that? So it makes sense he rips off the incredible Crash Dummies. But regardless, um, let's get into some of the nitty gritty. <laughs> okay. Now the first issue is one single story. The um, others would be one story with a smaller backup story but um you can see the artwork uh here already slick guy behind the wheel is uh depicted as being slightly different shade of of skin tone i don't know can you use the word skin tone on a crash dummy it just as a way of differentiating them uh the action figures they were exact same skin shade um and they are essentially each the same character now, at the back, the, the very back of um, each issue, there's um, what they were hoping would eventually be a letters page. Never worked out that way. But um, but they refer to these two as, um, as as an Abbott and Costello team. And that's that's just not accurate. They're more of a, a Costello and Costello team. There's no Abbott. There's no straight man. There's... Um, Nobody to play off each other. Literally, their dialogue is interchangeable. Um, this is their um, uh, friend and um, boss, I guess, Dr. Zub. And um, so you can see the kind of art style they were going for here. Apparently, the, the Crash Dummies live in a place called Crash Town. How imaginative. And uh, they crash cars for a living, as you imagine Crash Dummies would do. And occasionally save the world from junk man. Because that, who else will? Because plot demands it. So junk man uses a giant robot dinosaur to kidnap the president. Um, sure. Fine. <laughs> oh, here's something else they were publishing at the time. Muppet Babies. Big laughs. Um, you know what? I'll believe that when I read it. And I'm not reading it, so I will probably never believe it. So you have Crash Dummies fighting giant robot dinosaurs to save the president. And Junkman wants his face on the Mount Rushmore, which he actually gets. <laughs> Not only do they carve Junkman's face on Mount Rushmore, they actually take the time to paint it. Um, yeah, the, the giant robot dinosaur is tricked with a big mirror. This is the kind of humor that uh, <laughs> these comics employ. And these are the bad guys, junk mans, junk bots. And uh, like the Crash Dummies, they are all interchangeable. They are All three of them are just idiot robots. That's their one and only personality traits. So the art is passable. Um, you know, and I don't know what else you would expect from a Crash Dummy comic. Oh, here's the president. You never get to see his face. But this was 1993, so do a little Googling and figure out who that is on your own. I already know, but I'm not going to tell you everything. Oh, and look, the giant uh, junk man face is still there, but now it has a funny nose. Ha, ha. And uh, Spin's head fell off. It's... You know, it's it's fun to have. It's fun just to be able to say, you know, that I've got it. But um, they're not, as I said, terribly good. By issue number two, we've already got Crash Mummies. And here's one of them now saying, peek a boo You know what? I guarantee you the comic was canceled based on this cover alone. It's rather pathetic as far as jokes go. Um... I've always found the way that these guys fall apart in the comics to be kind of disturbing. 
Like there's no connection um, in their limbs. Okay, now we take an actual crash dummy. And um, we're going to pull his leg off. And you can see his little connector point here on his leg, which will snap into this hole. And, and you know what? I feel that that's something they should have emulated here because I have no idea how these guys are supposed to stay together. So this features a story about um, uh, junk bots disguised as mummies and um, it's not terribly good. There's also a backup story, which I was actually more interested in the backup story. The backup story um, promises to be an origin story for the crash test dummies. But, um, yeah. So you get this little kid dummy who's um, not proud of being a dummy. Imagine that. I'm not proud of being a dummy. Oh my. And so they get to tell him the entire history of Crash Dummies. I thought this could be interesting. And, you know, it could have been interesting. And it just wasn't. Um, we find that Crash Dummies are created by a safety engineer. That's a safety engineer. The person who came up with the concept of Crash Dummies, she doesn't even get a name. And uh, this seems to imply that Slick and Spin not only were the first Crash Dummies, so um, now goodbye Vince and Larry, but uh, they were initially created in their Pro-Tech suits and not the classic dummy look we all know and love. Um, it doesn't really tell you anything. You couldn't have figured it out on your own. And um, cover for the third and final issue isn't bad as far as these things go. Um, sadly, I can't say the same about the story. It starts off, you think it's going to be a superhero parody, but it's really not. It's Junk Man on the Moon, because why not? And then they have a backup story here as well. This is actually, maybe my favorite story is the final backup story. Where uh, one of the two dummies, I forget which, um, Spin apparently, um, is, is accidentally reprogrammed to believe that Junkman's his father. Uh, it has uh, a seed in it of something interesting and it never comes to pass. And uh, the uh, final uh, letter page here, which they titled Crashing Out, which should be Cashing Out because this will be their final issue, Promises the um, next issue will be a Christmas one, and um, that that doesn't happen. That never comes to pass. And uh, so yeah, three issues of the incredible Crash Dummies. Here they are. They're relatively cheap online. I got these all for like a buck and change plus shipping. Do not pay more than that for them. They are not good, but. You know, they're fun to have. They're a nice conversation starter. So, you know, if you see them for that price, go ahead and pick it up. But uh, don't go out of your way to find these. So, guys, this has been the Starving Martian in our first episode of Thought Bubbles. Uh, leave me a Thought Bubble in the comment below. Tell me what you think about the Crash Test Dummies. And uh, we'll catch up with you with more um, comics out of my personal vault at another time. But until then, keep watching the skies.